Hello, and enter the Fitiverse. I'm John, and once again, I am joined by Joe, Tyler, Alex, and Russell, my good pals. Say hello, everybody. Hi. Hey, hello. hello, everybody. You're very consistent with that opening. Yep. <laughs> That's what I call professionalism. And speaking Indeed. of professionalism, we are going to be professionals right now. We're doing something a little different. We're going to be playing Snake Oil in so, Cards Against Humanity. Games. So, for those of you who don't know what Snake Oil is, it's a board game where you are given a bunch of, you know, one-word cards, and you have to take two of them and pitch a product to someone, and that person has to pick which is the best product they want to buy. So, we're going to be playing that in here. Uh, they have made some decks for Snake Oil, uh, which is great. Um, maybe I'll link the uh, people who created the decks in the description down below so you can check them out yourself. Um, but basically, we're going to be playing to four, like the actual board game. Um, and we're setting the aisle timer to unlimited, so everyone can, you know, pitch their products with time. They don't have to worry about it. So if everyone's ready, we can get started. Let's open up the tank and let All the right. sharks in. <laughs> I, I, would, <laughs> I do want to play a shark tank in that game. Okay, uh... Alex, here the cards are. What are you? The assassin, blank, comma, blank. So you are an assassin, so we're trying to sell to an assassin. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's basically... I'm an, I'm an assassin. <laughs> yeah, you are a wonderful assassin. I didn't know how to read that. <laughs> so now you okay. have to... They just have two blanks so that we can play the two cards to make the product, basically. Yes, I am very good at killing people. So All what right. we'll do is, for the pitch... Uh, whoever is the first one in line will do their pitch first, and then we'll go through it. We'll know who each person is, of course, but uh, it's still fun. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> right, Would I, I lie to you? Yeah, we're going to go in order, too, probably. That'd be best, just in the way the cards are. He'll give the op to open the floor in order. I, I like Snake Oil because it gives you an opportunity to really plead your case. To why your cards really work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Russell just needs to come up with his million dollar idea. <laughs> yeah. Remember, Russell, you're selling to a hired killer here. Okay. Right, Alex, <laughs> up <on> the floor. <laughs> okay. Up first, we have the Vest Belt. <laughs> okay. So, the Vest Belt, product of our Curatech Industries, is to answer the age old problem. We've all been there. You're trying to sneak up on someone, you're hanging upside down from a ceiling, and your shirt falls over your face. <laughs> you lose sight of your target, and he's gone. Also, you've shown off your flabby stomach to everyone in the vicinity. Oh, no. He's the vest you belt fat. is to answer that. The vest belt combines a belt which sticks to your waist and the vest which holds your shirt in place. Oh. Additionally, it has several pockets that can hold other useful products, such as the decoy boy, the bacon spring, and the spirit sandwich. Damn. I want to know what some of these are. Damn. <laughs> okay, interesting. Up you have a starting price of $287. <laughs> oh, all right. That. Okay, up next we have the bacon spring. All right, instead of giving you a long, drawn-out list about what my thing can do, mine's short and simple, to the point. You ever want to lure someone in, you got this fresh smell of delicious bacon. Even if they don't like bacon, it still works because it's delicious. They lure it in by the bacon, and as soon as they're there, they spring, fly away, and you kill your target, and no one knows. They only know is the last thing they did was eat a piece of bacon. And that's how you get your kills as the number one assassin. All right, now let's keep it real. Hmm, hmm, so interesting. you're going in for the kill. You want to make sure that your target is distracted so they don't see it coming. That's why you need the decoy boy. We have <laughs> a stable of 100 boys that will run out and distract <laughs> the enemy. Damn. <laughs> and while they're going neener, 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 and distract them, <laughs> you can sneak up from behind and slit their throat. Damn. And the thing with the decoy boy is that even if they get killed, they are 100% replaceable. Wow. This is just another technological advancement from John Co. Industries. Mm, very impressive. Seems, seems like it might be quite effective in the field. All right, Joe, and you have the spirit sandwich. The spirit sandwich. I will very interesting name. 
Yes, very. Um, I read the card differently, so that's why spirits in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hang on. <laughs> My card was an accident, but so was I, so it doesn't matter. All right, oh. the spirit sandwich. Oh. Um, kind of very anticlimactic in a way. Um, what it is, I thought of the toothpicks that sometimes go on sandwiches to keep them together. Mm -hmm. And just kind of hide those within the sandwich. So as they're eating, they could potentially choke on the sandwich and die. There is no evidence that you did it. You can basically serve it to them and go away and Please. be certain that your they're target dead. has been killed. I was really wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's quite an interesting case. Well, it's essentially a stick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a toothpick. Yeah. A very, a very small stick that could theoretically pose a threat to someone. But will more likely end up with a complaint being lodged with the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay, well, to uh, go over these, vest belt seems like it could be kind of superseded with you know, just wearing a tight shirt. <laughs> Fitting you know, pants. Yeah, you know, just tuck that into your actual belt. Be fine. Bacon spring sounds interesting. I, I, I like the overall concept, but, you know, the problem is I might fall for it myself, and that just, you know, <laughs> it, it's a workplace hazard. Bacon is quite tempting. Mm. I am going to have to go with the decoy boy, as that sounds excellent and awesome. Yes, it you know? rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> it does. So good marketing there, John. You win the round. Yay. I am a winner. I well, thank you for watching, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. Shark tank. Mm. Oh, Russell, you're a lumberjack. I'm a lumberjack. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'll Some go with submitted this. already. <laughs> I don't know. Go with that and that. Doom, 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 doom. Oh Alrighty. my god, who put that? <laughs> Who had sawdust? All right, so you're a lumberjack. <laughs> oh, now, you know, you have to wake up at <laughs> real early good. in the morning. You got to go to the tree. You got to climb up them. You got to climb down them. You got to cut them down. You got to send them to the mill. You got to process them. Why go through the hassle? Skip the middleman. Buy some sawdust. And then you can <laughs> give it to whoever you need to send it to. You still make money, but without all that effort. Sawdust. A really uninventive solution <laughs> by John Cohen. Industry. <laughs> auto -glove. Interesting, interesting. All right. The auto glove. Same lines as not putting in <laughs> as much effort uh, as the sawdust. Um, the auto glove, as the name would suggest, automatically does a predetermined gesture for you. What it, what it entails... For the lumberjack specifically, you take an axe, of course, you hold it, and the auto glove will cut down the tree for you. Now, of course, this isn't only applicable to lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> it's applicable to the another type of jacking. It can be used in many different scenarios. We'll leave that up to your imagination. <laughs> All right, now if you don't want to enjoy, if you want to enjoy the struggle, because you are a lumberjack, you're rugged, you're tough, you want to enjoy your job as a lumberjack. So introducing the lasso hammer, making it efficient but also enjoyable. Combine the technology of Thor's hammer and Wonder Woman's lasso. You have the lasso hammer. Neither of Basically. those people are real. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you take the hammer, knock down the tree, take the lasso, and boom! Tied it all up and nice and tidy, as a lumberjack should. Down and dirty, with the lasso hammer. Fascinating. 
Alex? <laughs> okay, well, uh, I could see, yeah, as your profession is a lumberjack, you're a out- bit of an outdoorsman, so uh, whether it's for... <laughs> Well, it's for business or pleasure. I'm guessing you're also going to be doing like some kayaking, perhaps, because you're outdoors a lot. The Hope Paddle is a paddle <clears throat> for a boat or kayak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and is that it? it? <laughs> <laughs> That's. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> What's the hope part? Do you hope it works? <laughs> I well, hope, hope it part. lands me a check. I hope thing. this works. Uh, <laughs> 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 you, you can't win them all, can you? <laughs> <laughs> So we have sawdust, <laughs> which is sawdust. <laughs> uh, the give the middle man more flapjacks for you. The otter glove. Many, many uses for the otter glove. It's a, yeah. it's a cross-purpose tool. <laughs> um, the lasso hammer, which I'm still not entirely clear on. <laughs> I'm just imagining just swinging the hammer around on the oh, yeah. string and then hitting a nail that's really far away. <laughs> And a paddle. <laughs> but with hope. Paddle. Trademark. It's actually pretty boring. <laughs> May I remind you, my hammer's supposed to knock down trees, not hammer and nails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that is points in its camp. Gary, you gotta swing that mm. thing around. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the auto glove. Yeah, go with the uh, But sawdust. <laughs> it's sawdust, man. It's sawdust. <laughs> It's John. the most efficient way to finish the job. John, honestly, I would have gone and saw dust. <laughs> I am a noble knight. Mm. Bringeth me your products, squires. <laughs> Merchants. Friends. <laughs> oh, 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 man. I'm going to have fun with this one. Maybe not. I don't know. Whew. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. I open the court to the first merchant. Okay. In the new world... We have found a magical substance called medicine grass. <laughs> Man, your branding department. After. <laughs> <laughs> After a battle or a joust, when you want to calm down and relax, I have a product for you. <laughs> Have you ever felt like you want to stare at a wall for nine hours? <laughs> <laughs> or just s- sit on a horse, walking in a circle, wondering about what it all means? <laughs> then you need medicine grass. Medicine grass is administered using a flame and a small pipe. Is and can be as cheap. Approved? What? S- side effects may include heart vomiting. Um. <laughs> Is FDA approved? Side effects may include being very, very, very hungry. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> buy our stuff. Totally. Okay, it's okay. Totally Dr. Arcuri special all. blend. <laughs> all oh, right, uh, what, our next merchant, please. The Horse Finder. Of course. <laughs> Again, this name is very straightforward. As a knight, you certainly need a noble steed. Mm-hmm. But... How do you know the first one you pick is the perfect match for you? <laughs> that came out wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> Instead of okay finder. Cupid, it's okay Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, Clydesdale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Slepnir. Of course, this horse finder. <laughs> or obviously, find you the perfect horse for going into battle for jousting and various other things. Horse finder. Yes. <laughs> Freaky <laughs> fillies in your neighborhood. <laughs> Uh, next, please. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we here at Alex Solutions know that war is, in fact, hell. Why not make it easier on yourself with a murder siren? <laughs> <laughs> the murder siren is actually an occupational tool that will help it, that will make it easier to murder things on the battlefield, as you would need to do. <laughs> Was it motivation? <laughs> <laughs> Just like. <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> well, I mean, siren. siren implies a... <laughs> the siren, if it does not send your foes fleeing in terror, may make them have a panic attack on the battlefield, in which case they will be in an easy position for you to ride up and murder them. <laughs> Bank and I have a lot of psychology. Do we have that yet? <laughs> Frankly, this makes the job easier and safer for you. So really, can you afford not to buy one? Yes. Next. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, then. Now you're a knight, right? That was cool. Uh, yes. Yes, I am. You have to wear very heavy armor, correct? Yep, it protects me. It does protect you. <laughs> but you have to wait and wait for that new armor. How about plastic? Plastic. A very light material. For your needs. If you want to be the swiftest and fastest knight out there, try our plastic uniform and you will never be hit again. How's the deal against mace? It's plastic. <laughs> okay, so not well. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with this one here because not only was it hilarious, but it's actually quite useful if you're a knight. Yeah, yeah, I would say yeah. good job, Joe. <laughs> Even though I was thinking of Tinder the whole time for horses, but you oh, know. I was thinking that too. It's still quite useful. Uh oh. I am Captain Kirk. Uh oh. I need for my space voyage. My Star Trek, if you will. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't watch Star Trek. Don't worry, oh, neither have I. Wait, the card czar hasn't watched Star Trek. No. <laughs> oh, I'm crap. not the card czar. Oh, Joe isn't. But you know who Captain Kirk is, right? Yeah. You know, Luke, I am your father. He, yeah, it. Nanu Nanu. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Williams. Great. <laughs> Too soon, John. Wow. Well, I hmm. lost. I really <laughs> love the second one. If that's Joe's. I'm bizarre. Oh. I don't. <laughs> Tyler oh, never knows who's picking. I get zoned out. You don't even know what I'm doing over here. It's too much medicine grass, I see. Yeah. <laughs> At least he had a buyer. Wasn't a total flop. All right, Joe. It'll be really popular in like 500 years. It will. Uh, it's to me. <laughs> okay, Joe, the fact that you don't really know Star Trek throws a huge wrench into this. Well, no, I know that Star Trek is, like, obviously space, so an alien table makes sense. Yes, but if you don't know Cook, then I don't know how well this pitch is going to go. Well, oh. explain, explain to him in the yeah. pitch. Okay, so Captain Cook was a bit of a ladies' man, and those ladies right. were not always human. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's Captain Kirk. You only need to speak to him in third person. Only he speaks to himself in third person. I need to be informed about myself. I have Alzheimer's. Leave me alone. He is old. <laughs> Uh, well, the table is less of a table and more of a bed. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. uh, frankly, this will just save you time in the long run. You know, I'm done with this. I don't know. 
I got nothing beyond that. <laughs> All right, now, Captain Kirk, you are probably one of the best captains the Enterprise has ever seen. You've had put you. in many, many years of service, and we are all very grateful for your protection of the galaxy. But, you yes. know, time passes. Uh, you've moved on. You're, you're a little older now. <laughs> okay. Now, I know that, <laughs> I know, you know, the Enterprise that went, you know, warp speed, light speed. I'm probably getting it wrong. <laughs> Russell can attest. He's probably just like you know squeezing a stress ball right now. Like, it's not speed, what it's yeah. called. Oh, I'm um, I'm sitting over here like glaring. Well, at the camera, want which isn't to, on. To regain those glory days of speed, but with something you can manage a little better. That's why I introduced the energy scooter. Now, <laughs> as an older older gentleman, you need a mobility scooter to get around, but you want to be able to see distant lands, uh, meet up with hot, uh, <laughs> uh. By Centennial Alien Women. <laughs> the energy scooter is going to give you the drive, the warp drive, to get there. All right, sounds good. Before I step through my pitch, I just want to say if I had Priceline, I would have won immediately. Yes. But. <laughs> Captain Kurt, <laughs> you want to fend off aliens, you want to do some, do it in the coolest way possible. Hey, I'm introducing you the ice musket. Simple, straight <laughs> to the point. It's a musket that basically, if you shoot any enemy, they will be frozen solid into ice. Let nice. it go. They will be frozen in time. You can have them on display Ew. and everything. That's it. That's, that's all That's it all is. I got. It's, it's just a, a simple musket that's made yeah. of ice. Yes. No, 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 it shoots ice. It's not made of ice. <laughs> it's made of ice, too. <laughs> yeah, sure. Keep it Wait, cold. it shoots ice? I thought it froze the person. It, well, it does. It's just on contact, they automatically It's an freeze. ice beam. It's like, uh, it's, like yeah. the, it's like liquid nitrogen, only it's actually ice. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> sure. Russell's got that stress ball going. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Mine violates just as many laws of physics. Alrighty. <laughs> Shovel right. <laughs> Another product from Arcuratech, the Shovel Ray. How many times have you been fighting an alien on some distant world when you thought, man, I could really use a shovel just to bash a thing right in, the fr right in its head? Or a nice musket. <laughs> well, if you don't want to be a pan <laughs> if you don't want to be a pansy and use a ranged weapon, <laughs> if you want to do melee stuff, you need the Shovel Ray. Shovels are inconvenient to carry around. So we've designed a ray that you can fire at the ground and get a shovel. <laughs> the most convenient way to carry your supply of shovels. Using the same technology as the food producing machines inside the Enterprise, we can produce a shovel. It's really that simple. Don't look too far into the physics because you'll find plenty of holes. <laughs> Thanks. Can, can I offer an alternative pitch? Go ahead. No. It, it, it's just a guy named Ray that shovels your driveway. <laughs> <laughs> the shovel, right? <laughs> Happy well, to help off. I just, I just had a picture in my head of Captain Kirk beating the Gorn in the head within it with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> the well of Joe. Although I am in a very high position in the galaxy, I do believe that the time, that my time is coming to a close, to be the leader. Uh -huh. And so, <laughs> I will have to go with the energy scooter. Oh my Yay! god. <laughs> Alright. I will have to say, I need to go with my successor, Shovel Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I am the president. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Uh, I, I am the president. Can, for each pitch, we determine which president we think you are? Sure. I'm right. whatever president oh, you want. Oh, okay. All right, I have mine. <laughs> hmm. Now, William, William H. Taft... I didn't actually have a plan in mind when I did that, when I asked that question. I'm just curious. <laughs> don't don't matter. I have mostly throwaways right now. Just say, like, James K. Polk. <laughs> yeah. Random. I've had nothing but throwaways on mine. All my cards have sucked. Well, yeah, you gotta be creative, because... Yeah. Well, I, 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 I love this game. Throwaways. It's a fantastic game. Oh, wait a minute. Da-da-da. Da-da-da-da-da. 
Da, Remember the, da, 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 da. Were you there for the moon balloon? <laughs> no. It was for a vampire. <laughs> well, damn. <laughs> Oh remember, oh, remember Bloodtooth? Mm hmm. Also, the bloody also, with me. also, the joke hanger. Oh, God. Not I'll explain joke. that later. But, Tyler, you're up with your. All right. Hair. Mine's butter. the hair butter. Yeah. <laughs> what president am I, oh, for one? Never mind. You are the czar. I forgot. All See, right. Oh, well, you make fun of me when you forget this. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Hair butter, all right? All right. This is huge. <laughs> <laughs> I know what he's voting for. <laughs> <laughs> I got the best hair, and I got the best butter. <laughs> so you just put them together. You got. I've got straight face. Hair butter. I've got two butter. bankrupt companies. I'm gonna put them together just for you. <laughs> <laughs> you take the butter and you rub it on your head, right? Yeah. And then give it a few days. It's like a chia pet. <laughs> <laughs> like a chia pet, right? Yeah. After like after 24 hours, you got a full, beautiful head of hair, just like mine. You know, totally not a toupee. <laughs> It's the best thing you'll ever be you'll ever see, believe me. Don't be duped, it's not a tube. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Are, are you advocating for your competitor's product? I don't care. I just love all this. So product. what about freedom tape? I'm very interested. <laughs> By the way, Joe, beautiful. Thank you. Best presentation. <laughs> Mr. President, we know that as leader of the free world, you need the absolute best in office supplies. Yes. Yes, I do. Freedom tape is like <laughs> no office whole office tape you have ever used before. <laughs> it is sticky. Yes. And it's, and it I've is, seen stickier. Is it, how much does it cost? It better be free. It is entirely free. Well, I've never seen a man hang himself on stage before. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Beautiful. All right, next. All right, now, President Clinton. That's Eric John. <laughs> I know that you are where the party is, whether it be at the White House banquet or in your pants. So to make sure you don't miss any parties, we have the Party Sensor. It is a mobile app for your phone that you can use to sense out where the party is. <laughs> it could be anywhere. And you can track certain parties. Like if you want to track, I don't know, say Monica Lewinsky, just some random name I'm throwing out there. <laughs> you can input her into the system and you'll know where she is because she is the party. All the time, and you can put it into private mode in case you, you know you you just want to keep the party to yourself. Now, you know if I, I if I meet Monica Lewinsky in this party, can I use Freedom Tape to cover her mouth? Um, you could, but why waste the money? Very true. <laughs> well, Freedom Tape's entirely free. Remember, I yeah, get you for half the price. It's still too much. <laughs> the freedom but in the name sticky. refers to freedom from profits. <laughs> The only thing you're stuck with is the freedom tape. <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, so many tape Please puns. Please explain the desk vagina. Okay. <laughs> so you're still President Clinton in this. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ready. We I all know you going. have a proclivity for having sex in the Oval Office. Yes, I do. Definitely in the Oval. But it's inconvenient to try and hide it if there's an actual person in the Oval Office with you, mm -hmm. yeah, quite. that's where my invention comes in. <laughs> We've taken a flashlight and mounted it inside of a desk. It's really quite simple. There's not much more to it than that. We've taken vaginal technology. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. <laughs> you know, imagine the guy that has to install that. <laughs> no, Joe, for your pitch, I would have given it to you. But I really didn't want to smear butter all over my head. 
Oh, what? <laughs> but it's like a chia pet. It just poof. <laughs> like, a chia, like a chia pet. <laughs> well, Alrighty. now it's your name. Finally, another round where I'm not going to embarrass myself. Hmm. Necessarily, anyway. Hmm. Alrighty. <laughs> oh, God. So, Alex, you're an amputee. A. <sighs> College was a rough time for me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, student loans that cost me an arm and a leg. <laughs> Ayo, I'm out. Tip your waitress. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> your booze make me stronger. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, damn. My cards so are so bad. As the amputee, can we decide which limbs you're missing? <laughs> I've I've taken that assumption Go in mind. <laughs> Have at it, man. Totes, goats, brutes. <laughs> 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 Which one are you laughing at, John? The first one! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the one is story, hey. Oh, God. <laughs> Alright, so you're an amputee. Yes. You mm. gotta have a story of why you lost your limbs, man. I mean, but sometimes the best stories are the whitest stories. <laughs> you know, it, it's, a, it's basically a book. It's a book about a man that lost his arm... Doing God knows what, but in the whitest way possible. It's so, a joke. It's good for a laugh. It's good for anything to make light of you losing your arms or your legs or anything. Introducing the whitest story. Thank so you. basically, it's your autobiography. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 Tyler, what am I actually paying for here? <laughs> You're paying for a book called The Whitest Story. <laughs> Am I going to be able to claim that's mine then if I buy it? Or <laughs> yes, yes. Basically, you buy this story and you can use this as your autobiography. <laughs> hmm. I basically wrote a story about your life, and you can lie. It could be a lie. It couldn't even be based off how it is, but it is the whitest story ever written. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say next. <laughs> All right. So you're an amputee because your legs were too stupid to exist. <laughs> so you're crawling around everywhere and you know when you're crawling around everywhere you look like a dummy no one likes you <laughs> so that's why i have the crawling sweater now when you're crawling around the street you at least look pretty stylish this sweater hugs to your slightly reduced frame and provides good protection against rocks broken glass or other street related shrapnel the crawling sweater. I hope you'll crawl into one soon. Damn. Damn. You really should have made your slogan, everyone looks better in a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next we have the dance noodle. <laughs> okay. The dance noodle. So you're missing an arm, maybe two. And you want to dance the night away. <laughs> You could just have a prosthetic arm with only one bending location, and that can only bend in one direction. But why get a realistic replacement for your arm when we can build you better? The dance noodle. If you've ever wanted to dance like the wacky, waving, inflatable arm flailing tube man, you can do it with the dance noodle. Have also you ever available in pairs. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Have you awesome. ever wanted to be a character from a 1930s Mary Melodies cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> Now's your chance. So cockball, huh? Joe, you have an exclamation. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> Need I say more? Do um, explain. Some amputees, you know, they lose their arms. Some lose their legs. Some lose both. But what if you lose <laughs> your third arm? The cockball. Not my liver. <laughs> Very self-explanatory. I really do not need to say more. Sold. <laughs> you know what? They. You know what? They actually started doing penis transplants in South Africa. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> it did. 
and they're doing the first one in the U.S. sometime this year. Yeah. Don't ask okay. how I know so much about this.